something just happened that no one was ready for. The Shroud of Turin, the most controversial and sacred relic in history, was just decoded by artificial intelligence. And what it uncovered is sending shockwaves through science, religion, and even governments. For centuries, experts debated, is this cloth the actual burial shroud of Jesus? Or an elaborate medieval hoax? Carbon dating couldn't agree. Microscopes offered contradictions. No one had answers. Until Mao, a next-gen AI fed with millions of historical patterns, forensic imaging models, and radiation simulations, was turned loose on the shroud. Not just to scan it, but to understand it. It found data hidden in the fibers, patterns invisible to the human eye, heat signatures, molecular distortions, something no ancient forger could have created. What the AI detected defies everything we know about physics and history. No paint, no brush strokes, no natural explanation, only a burst of high-frequency energy, so fast, so precise, it could have only lasted a fraction of a second. And yet, it scorched an image of a man, crucified, exactly as described in ancient texts. The machine doesn't lie. And now, the world is being forced to face a terrifying question. What kind of event could burn an image into ancient cloth without leaving a single trace of human interference? Before we unravel what the AI actually found, hit that like button, subscribe, and get ready. Because what you're about to see changes everything. For centuries, the Shroud of Turin has been one of the world's most baffling mysteries. A simple piece of linen, marked faintly with the image of a man, naked, wounded, and crucified. Many believe it's the actual burial shroud of Jesus Christ himself. But here's the catch. This cloth first surfaced quietly in the 14th century France. No miracles announced it. No ancient scrolls documented it. Just a claim by a local knight, shrouded in silence. Then, everything changed in 1898. A photographer took a picture of the shroud, and when the negative was developed, a startling revelation appeared. The faint smudge transformed into a detailed, haunting image of a man's face and body, wounds and all. Suddenly, this faded linen was no longer just fabric. It became a puzzle that experts couldn't ignore. What sets the shroud apart? Unlike every other religious relic, the image behaves like a photographic negative, an astonishing effect given that photography was invented centuries later. Scientists found no brush strokes, no ink, no paint, nothing that explained how it could have been created by human hands. Some even proposed the image was formed by an intense burst of radiation, a theory that sent shockwaves through scientific and religious communities alike. As the 20th century wore on, debates grew heated. Evidence stacked up, bloodstains matching human type AB, wounds matching Roman crucifixion techniques, and pollen trapped in the fibers pointing directly to the Jerusalem area. This was not just another relic. But then, in 1988, the seemingly final blow came, carbon-14 dating. Laboratories in Oxford, Zurich, and Arizona analyzed tiny samples of the cloth. And their conclusion? The linen dated between 1260 and 1390 AD, a medieval creation, not an ancient artifact. For many scientists, the debate was over. The shroud was dismissed as a brilliantly crafted forgery. Except it wasn't that simple. Almost immediately, doubts about the test began to surface. Experts pointed out that the samples had been taken from a corner of the cloth, an area likely repaired after a devastating fire in the 16th century. That patch might contain newer cotton fibers woven in with the original linen, contaminating the results. Suddenly, the carbon dating verdict didn't seem so airtight. The mystery wasn't closed. 
it was just getting started. Decades later, in the 21st century, technology returned to the shroud with sharper tools and sharper questions. Researchers applied a technique called wide-angle X-ray scattering, or WAX. The results stunned even skeptics. The linen fibers showed aging characteristics not of medieval fabric, but of something far older, possibly from the first century. Based on structural degradation patterns, some scientists concluded the cloth could date anywhere between 55 and 74 AD. But that wasn't all. Isotope analysis of the linen's flax pointed directly to the Levant, the region of modern-day Israel and Lebanon, not France, not Europe, the very geographic cradle of early Christianity. And what's more, forensic studies revealed blood on the shroud, real blood, human blood, most likely AB type, a rare but not unheard of group. The blood stains weren't artistically placed either. They aligned with major arteries, veins, and wound points, wrists, feet, side, forehead, scalp. The pattern matched Roman-era crucifixion practices with eerie precision. Further wound analysis found microscopic traces of dirt around the foot areas, suggesting contact with rocky terrain. Spines and punctures around the head lined up with what would result from a crown of thorns. Abrasions on the shoulders hinted at something heavy being carried, perhaps a crossbeam, and there were no signs of artificial manipulation, no glue, no pigment, no applied substance to create the image. All these layers of forensic detail weren't just historical. They were anatomical, medical, even forensic. As data poured in, one hypothesis returned, louder, bolder, and more unthinkable than ever. The resurrection hypothesis. According to some researchers, the image on the shroud might have formed from an event involving a burst of ultraviolet radiation. Not just any burst, a flash containing several billion watts of energy within a few nanoseconds. That's orders of magnitude greater than any natural light source we know. There's no ancient technology that could do this. No medieval technique that could fake it. It's a burst that, to this day, science cannot replicate. What could release such power and leave behind an image without scorching the cloth? Some propose it wasn't fire, but transformation. That the image formed in the exact moment the body vanished. Not decomposed, not decayed, but disappeared. The cloth shows signs of trauma, yes but zero signs of decomposition. No bodily oils, no breakdown products. Just a faint, photonegative image burned into linen fibers at a microscopic level. This theory, that the burst was the physical trace of a resurrection moment, remains deeply controversial. It straddles the edge of belief and biology, physics, and faith. But the deeper you look, the harder it becomes to explain the image by conventional means. The body seems to have left a shadow of itself, not from pressure, not from pigment, but from something else entirely. As the conversation advanced, the debate itself began to shift. Mainstream scientists still leaned on the 1988 carbon testing, calling it the most reliable method available. They argued that anomalies in a single corner of the shroud didn't invalidate the whole cloth stating. To them, Newer tests offered possibilities, not proof. The image could still be the work of a clever forger, they insisted, just one with a method we haven't figured out yet. But critics of the 1988 tests pushed back hard. They claimed the sample area wasn't just suspicious. It was irrelevant. Fire damage, repair threads, and cotton contamination made the tested section scientifically useless. More importantly, they pointed out that 1988's radiocarbon technology wasn't equipped to handle multi-layered, heat-damaged textiles. Modern technology, they claimed, paints a very different picture, one of age, authenticity, and mystery. Proponents of a genuine ancient shroud emphasized the consistency of the details. Forensic, 
geographical, anatomical, historical, the kind of layering that's virtually impossible to fake. Every new test seemed to point to the same unnerving conclusion. This cloth isn't just old. It's intelligent, encoded with information, responding to light, pressure, and biological markers in ways science still struggles to decode. The debate, by now, was no longer about whether the shroud was real or fake. That binary had collapsed under too much contradiction, too much evidence on both sides. The question had evolved. The world now asked, what exactly is it? It was in this moment of confusion, tension, and silence that a new player entered the scene. Not a historian, not a priest, not a scientist, but something different. Something trained on billions of patterns. Trained not to believe or disbelieve, but to interpret, to detect, to reconstruct artificial intelligence. At first, no one expected AI to weigh in on matters of faith. But in the case of the Shroud, it became an unexpected witness. Using platforms like Midjourney, researchers and artists fed high-resolution scans of the Shroud into neural networks prompting the AI to reconstruct the face and form embedded in the linen. What emerged wasn't glowing or divine. It wasn't the classic European depiction, nor a soft-lit icon from a Renaissance painting. What came out was a rugged, battered, deeply human Semitic man. Sun-worn skin, swollen lips, bruised cheeks, thick, matted hair. There was no halo, no soft light, no exaggerated symmetry, but the image was alive in its raw realism. It looked like someone who had truly been beaten, dragged, pierced, and buried. The AI hadn't embellished. It had interpreted. Based on texture, stain, proportion, and compression, it rendered what the data suggested, and the result shook people. Viewers, religious or not, were startled by the sheer humanity of the face, not glorious, exhausted, not clean, but raw, not invented, but real. Anthropologists noted the proportions matched known first-century Semitic bone structure. The nose was broken, but proportional. The brow, jawline, and hair all reflected the region, not westernized interpretations. Blood trickled down the forehead in narrow, believable paths. There was an intensity to the image that couldn't be ignored. Not just visual accuracy, but emotional depth. As though the AI had somehow unlocked grief, pain, and surrender all in one frame. Some called it a miracle of pixels, others a psychological trick. But one thing was certain. The image pulled people in. Then came the alignment. The AI-generated visuals weren't just hauntingly accurate. They mirrored historical and scientific findings from decades of research. The posture of the body, as rendered by the machine, matched the wound locations on the cloth. Arms slightly flexed, head tilted just right, feet placed over one another with a spike point between the bones. Some of the generated images took creative liberty interpreting the light source not as paint or contact, but as energy. In several versions, rays of intense light seem to radiate from the body, especially the face and hands, suggesting that the image on the shroud wasn't pressed on by weight, but seared in by exposure. In one chilling recreation, the entire body hovered slightly above the cloth, as though levitating. No contact, no pressure points, just light, suspended. This was more than artistry. The AI was interpreting from data, pixel density, discoloration levels, spatial compression. The generated face remained calm, despite the wounds. It looked serene, not lifeless, but resting, as if whatever had happened to the body had ended and something else had already begun. Screenshots flooded the Internet. Captions followed, AI doesn't believe, but it may have visualized a miracle.
Millions watched. Millions commented. Some were brought to tears, others to rage. The image didn't answer the question. It made it louder. Then, as always, the skeptics arrived. Their argument, artificial intelligence only reflects what it's been trained on. Mid-journey, like most visual AIs, learns by consuming vast troves of existing imagery. And what's been most depicted in Western art for centuries? Jesus, crucifixions, the shroud itself. The AI wasn't discovering truth, critics claimed. It was regurgitating biased data sets. But something didn't fit that theory. The AI didn't generate the soft, radiant European Jesus so common in classical paintings. The result was gritty, Middle Eastern, historically consistent. It didn't match Leonardo or Michelangelo. It matched anthropological reports, skull reconstructions, and forensic evidence. The eyes were deep-set. The nose flattened. The face sun-darkened and bruised. There was nothing glamorized about it. Skeptics called it data convergence. A coincidence. The machine connected familiar dots and gave a familiar shape. Nothing spiritual about it. But even some of the harshest critics admitted that the realism was unsettling. It didn't feel like AI fantasy. It felt like a moment frozen in trauma. What disturbed many wasn't just the image itself, but the consistency. Every time the AI was rerun, refined, or retrained with different data sets, the same general face kept appearing. Roughly the same proportions, the same wounds, the same broken calmness. It wasn't chaos, it was convergence. Even atheists and agnostics who dismissed the resurrection found themselves weirdly captivated by the face. It didn't scream divinity, it whispered human suffering. Something in the posture, the eyes, the downward tilt of the mouth, it all felt deeply real, not symbolic, not stylized, just there. One skeptic put it bluntly. I don't believe in miracles. But something about this image feels like it remembers pain. Another neuroscientist reviewing the AI output admitted, It's eerie. It's like the shroud was a 2,000-year-old negative waiting for an AI to decode it. And what we got wasn't fantasy. It was a man who looked like he was just pulled from the tomb. The conversation escalated. Was this just visual pattern recognition? Or had artificial intelligence, unknowingly, reverse-engineered a historical moment of unimaginable trauma? Whatever the explanation, something had changed. The shroud was no longer just a relic in a museum. It was now a living file in a neural network, decoded, reinterpreted, visualized, but not explained. And as that image circulated, stirring awe, discomfort, and debate, Theologians found themselves facing a new frontier. Some embrace the AI reconstructions as a bridge, an unprecedented tool to connect the ancient with the modern. For them, this isn't about replacing faith with code, but enhancing it. The AI doesn't replace belief, it visualizes it. It helps believers imagine what they've only read about the blood, the wounds, the human cost, 